there. So today's light rope video uh, is really about, uh, it's triggered by this, um, I think my tripod's a little crooked, but it's triggered by this post I saw uh, this morning on LinkedIn. And it was a, a, a compare and contrast kind of thing. It had a couple of pictures by it. And I think my hair's standing up funny. Anyway, it was um, a picture of a guy dressed in a suit, a younger fellow, and that said that um, he, this particular fellow, had received three months in jail for uh, uh, being convicted of, of raping a woman behind a dumpster. And I guess they'd been out and everybody was drunk and she'd been unconscious. So she had sex with an unconscious woman uh, behind a dumpster. Now that's awful, shouldn't happen. And his, his, the conviction was right and everything else. So no issue with that, absolutely. And the, whether or not the three months was enough, you know, I don't know all of the trial and didn't follow it and don't know any of the arguments or anything. But the picture was three months conviction for that. And next to it was a picture of another fellow who's a football player in the United States uh, who was convicted of dog fighting here some time ago. And he, he received 18 months in federal prison for dog fighting. So the and again, rightfully convicted, you know, terrible thing for the dogs and all wrong. The point of the article was the, con the contrast. So three months prison for, you know, having sex with this unconscious woman being convicted of rape. Uh, and I guess they'd been out and whatever. And then 18 months for this dog conviction. And then the conclusion, of course, was that dogs are more important than people. Uh, and that, that, you know, that can bring up whatever controversy it brings up. And so that was the, the genesis. That was the setup. And that wasn't even the interesting part. The interesting part was reading through the comments. The comments, you know, were all kinds of comments about, um, you know, whether or not the sentences were just and it should have been more for this and more for that and all, all of that sort of stuff that, you, that you'd expect, right? Uh, different opinions about different people, and I'm not even going to express an opinion about that because I don't know enough about the details of either case to have a, a, a legit opinion. Both were wrong, and both were convicted, and both were punished. The interesting thing that has to do with the Light Rope series is this. One of the comments was, was a vicious outpouring of negative you know, venom against both individuals suggesting that both of them deserved essentially the death penalty. They should be, you know, destroyed and buried under the prison in eternity, or at least that this individual would turn his 200 pounds of pit bulls, plural, so I guess there's a couple of them, 100 pounds each or, or something, I don't know, loose on them with the implication, of course, that they would rip them to shreds. Then, in case anyone would be worried about that, he didn't want to sound threatening, so he said, but really, they would just lick them to death, trying, of course, to prove that his pit bulls were nice. I was shocked, not about pit bulls licking someone to death, because my dogs would lick someone to death. They're not pit bulls. I got an Aussie and a bagel, which is a beagle basset mix. So that was all good. Dogs licking someone to death is funny. The first part of the post and reply was not funny at all. It was sad. And it represented what I see a lot, which is someone has done something wrong. They absolutely did something that was wrong, perhaps intentionally. And somehow the feeling is that the only appropriate punishment is vicious and bitter horrific, painful punishment inflicted in perpetuity, you know, skin them alive and shot and, you know, just all kinds of cruel explanations. And it feels like we're struggling to find the words to, you know, to describe the terror of the punishment they should receive. And I always, first of all, that doesn't make any sense. What seems to be the thing is that if it's something that hurts us, there's no amount of pain or suffering or money or remuneration or anything that could make that right. It's an infinite sin, infinite pain. And that's nonsense. 
And then it's also delivered with that sort of ultimate venom and anger. So the reason this is in light rope here is after reading that, I wondered and it struck me that you and me, I do that to myself. I rail and rip myself, and maybe you do too, to an infinite degree, anger and you stupid. And I used to have a real habit of that. And I've been through a number of addictions and all of those are detailed in, in the book, Tightrope of Depression, which is the book that I released. If you're interested, why, you, know, you can find that on tightropeofdepression.com. A way to get, get a hold of that if that's interesting. Or you can just put my name in Amazon. But the thing that is interesting is the level of negativity. Uh, my find out, found, I finally found out that my real addiction is to self-loathing. You know, the, the place of yelling at myself and you suck, you suck. And I, and I, in the same manner as this particular comment was delivered, or I see people reacting, you know, that like there's no amount of punishment that could make me okay. I'm terrible because of whatever things that I have felt about myself or done or not done. And, and the only answer is some kind of infinite punishment. It's not true. Your encouragement today is it's just flat not true. There is no such thing as some act that is never able to be severely punished enough, first of all, because we have sentences, and yeah, once in a while we apply the, the death penalty, which as far as this life is concerned is the end. You know, you're dead. Okay, fine. But the idea that you should, or I should, beat ourselves up this terrible amount for things that have happened is just not true. God has given us time. We do things that are wrong, sometimes on purpose, sometimes that are mistakes, and then we have time afterwards. Now you, me, we can't change the things that have happened. I can't erase stuff I've done, and I would give anything to change some mistakes that I've made. But I can't, and so we have the choice then going forward, and this is your hope. You have the choice to beat yourself to death or have others do that with the idea that there is no end to that and can ever be no end. Or you can ignore all of that and tell yourself, I'm going to be or do something different in the future because I know I no longer own that person. It's like in Shakespeare's play, As You Like It, the brother who was trying to kill his younger brother, uh, it was an older brother trying to kill his younger brother who was mad at him. <clears throat> the younger brother kept being nice to him, and finally the younger brother rescued the older brother from death in a particular situation. And after that, the older brother realized he'd been wrong, and he completely changed. He changed his ways and everything else. And then these three ladies were talking to him, saying, well, aren't you the guy that kept trying to kill your younger brother? And he said, yes. Twas I, but tis not I. Meaning, that's who I was, but I'm not now. So the hope in this video today is, I don't care where you've been, and I don't care what you've done. It does not define your future. Who you were isn't who you are. Who you are today is not who you will be tomorrow. You have the opportunity to be different, do different, and it can start today. You have the, that opportunity in your hands. The future is the undiscovered country. It is the unwritten page. It is the white you know, page in the notebook that has nothing written on it. Now, you may need help. You may need to do whatever it is that happens. But to give up and say, it's over because of X deprives not only you of what you could be, but it deprives all of the world, the rest of us, me, of all the good that you could do. So your hope is the same hope for me, which is tomorrow, and even today starting with this minute, tomorrow second, tomorrow hour, tomorrow day, using tomorrow as meaning the next, the next hour, second, minute, day, month, year is unwritten. And in your hand and mine. Make the most of it, starting now. We'll see you tomorrow.